and welcome to the Alzheimer.tv News Bulletin, an initiative of the Mocha Clinic and Institute. This week, our team takes a closer look at vitamin D, resveratrol, and cocoa, three nutrients that could change Alzheimer's disease prevention and treatment. Also in this edition, could AD be transmissible between humans? We'll try to understand if this transmission could really occur. And could you be genetically protected from Alzheimer's? A new study reveals that could be the case. We'll also discuss the effect of brain cholesterol and blood sugar levels on AD. We all know that vitamins are essential for your health. And now, a study has proven that a deficiency of vitamin D may increase the risk for Alzheimer's disease and even be an indicator for AD. Kaya, can you tell us more about this interesting study? Dr. Joshua W. Miller of Rutgers University in New Jersey led an observational study on the levels of vitamin D in older people from diverse ethnicities. Dr. Miller's team followed 382 patients with an average age of 75. Some of the patients were healthy, some of them suffered from mild cognitive impairment, and some others suffered from Alzheimer's. The researchers observed the vitamin D status of the patients at the baseline of the study and then followed their cognitive functions over five years. At the beginning of the study, it was noted that patients with Alzheimer's had the lowest status of vitamin D, African Americans and Hispanics had lower vitamin D levels than white patients, probably because their skin is darker and protects them against the sun. The study concluded that if you had low vitamin D levels, your rate of cognitive decline was two and a half times faster, with no ethnic difference whatsoever. Vitamin D insufficiency or deficiency is associated with decreased short-term memory and decreased ability for completing complex cognitive tasks. The main finding of the study was that at baseline, if you had low vitamin D status, whether you were insufficient or outright deficient, your rate of cognitive decline, particularly in two subdomains of cognition, episodic memory, which is a short-term memory test, or executive function, which is much more complicated uh, cognitive functioning, the rate of decline of those two subdomains was significantly faster if you were vitamin D deficient at the beginning than if you were vitamin D adequate. Is vitamin D insufficiency and deficiency very common, Kaya? In the United States, 42% of the general adult population are either deficient or insufficient in vitamin D. In Canada, that's 32%. There are various factors that explain this lack of vitamin D. Obviously, not eating vitamin D rich food is one of them. Strict vegans are particularly at risk because we mostly find vitamin D in fish, eggs, cheese, fortified milk, and beef liver. Sun is also an important source of vitamin D, so northern populations who experience less sunlight or southern populations who must protect themselves from the sun may develop a vitamin D deficiency. Finally, melanin pigmentation in the skin may offer a protection against the sun, but they also block out vitamin D. So people with darker skin won't get as much vitamin D out of sun exposure as people with lighter skin. It remains to be determined whether vitamin D supplementation slows cognitive decline. Randomized control trials are needed in order to prove vitamin D's benefits against Alzheimer's, as Dr. Miller explains. I think the results of the study are very exciting, particularly the generalizability to um, multiple races and ethnicities. It really suggests that vitamin D status is important for everybody. And um, I think what really comes out of this study is just further indication that we need to do the randomized control trials in the right uh, populations, uh, such as older adults who are starting to um, uh, experience cognitive dysfunction, and to see if we can slow that down or prevent it or even reverse it. More good news for Epicureans. What if your glass of Cabernet Sauvignon could slow Alzheimer's disease progression? In a recent study, a natural compound named resveratrol was proved to decrease age-dependent cognitive decline and pathology in AD. Resveratrol can be found in red wine, red grapes, and peanuts. The team of researchers, led by Dr. R. Scott Turner, conducted the study with a synthesized form of resveratrol on 119 men and women suffering from mild to moderate AD. 
Half of them were given one gram of resveratrol daily, and the other half were given a placebo. We had four cognitive and functional outcome measures, and one of them showed a positive benefit of resveratrol treatment. This was the activities of daily living scale. These are things like using the telephone and cooking at home. We also found that the brain shrunk a little bit more with resveratrol treatment compared to the placebo group. This was a, an interesting observation. We're not quite sure how to explain it. We think it's because there's less swelling and inflammation in the brain as a result of the treatment. And to get one gram of resveratrol per day, all we need to do is drink our daily glass of red wine? Sadly, it's not that simple. The synthetic pure form of resveratrol that was given to the control group daily in capsules was equivalent to about a thousand bottles of red wine. We have to understand that in order to be effective, the quantity of resveratrol must be much greater than what's found in a single glass of wine. Our hope is for resveratrol to eventually become a natural daily supplement. However, that day has not yet come. So as a result of this study, we found that it was safe and it looked like it may have some positive benefits. So now we need to do the larger and longer, more definitive phase three study of resveratrol to see if it's really effective for patients with Alzheimer's disease. I would not advise that patients start taking this now. Cocoa is delicious, and now we have even more reasons to enjoy it. Eric, cocoa may even prevent the cognitive deterioration of Alzheimer's disease. Cocoa extract and some form of chocolate preparations seem to be a natural preventative against age-related neurodegenerative disorders such as Alzheimer's disease. Cocoa contains polyphenols, a micronutrient that we already know has benefits for reducing age-related cognitive dysfunction and for helping healthy brain aging. Cocoa extracts also improve neuronal communication in the brains of mice exposed to high levels of amyloid. This could be a safe and easy to find supplement that would improve brain function and even prevent Alzheimer's. So should we buy a handful of chocolate bars? Not quite. We still don't know how processed chocolate influences cocoa's biological effect. Further studies are needed to confirm the theory. Dr. Passanetti's study suggested that the consummation of specific cocoa breeds and cocoa extracts would be needed in order to benefit from the positive effects. A study led by Dr. John Collins of the University College London is the first evidence that AD may be transmissible through medical procedures. However, experts argue that this transmission is highly unlikely. Between 1958 and 1985, nearly 30,000 children worldwide received human growth hormone injections to treat dwarfism. These hormones were extracted from the pituitary glands of human cadavers. Unfortunately, some children received injections contaminated with the deadly Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, also known as mad cow disease. The study looked at the autopsy results of eight patients who received pituitary hormone treatment and subsequently died from the mad cow disease. Beta amyloid plaques, just like the ones found in the brains of Alzheimer's patients, were found in their brain. Could Alzheimer's have been transmitted by the injections they received? Skeptics insist that mad cow disease often causes amyloid deposits too and that no connection exists between the injections and Alzheimer's. Dr. Collins himself admitted that his study didn't reveal an amyloid seed transmission through contaminated instruments or blood. The 7 to 8 percent of the population who have the ApoE2 allele of the ApoE gene are quite lucky, according to a study by Lincoln Zhao and colleagues from the University of Kansas. ApoE2 is one of the three alleles of the human ApoE gene. While ApoE4 is proven to be a genetic risk factor for Alzheimer's and ApoE3 is proven to be neutral, the new study suggests that ApoE2 may protect from the disease. The researchers worked with hippocampal RNA samples from middle-aged female mice to observe the ApoE2 carrier's resistance to developing AD. The results showed that ApoE2 enhances glucose uptake and metabolism and also amyloid homeostasis in the brain. This suggests a reduced risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. Further studies are needed to see if ApoE2 can prevent or delay the onset of the disease. For the first time, research showed a relationship between tau pathology and cholesterol in Alzheimer's disease. 
We already know that tau protein tangles in the neurons are caused by Alzheimer's and that they increase cognitive decline. It now seems like cholesterol in the brain encourages the tangles formation. If excess brain cholesterol is not converted into 24S hydroxycholesterol, it can't cross the blood-brain barrier to be evacuated in the blood circuit and will accumulate in the brain. The conversion into 24S hydroxycholesterol is possible through the enzyme cholesterol 24 hydroxylase encoded by a specific gene named CYP46A1. Nathalie Cartier and her team from the University of Lille and the University of Paris du Sud conducted their study on modified mice with AD-like tau pathology, but without the amyloid component. Researchers injected a virus gene transfer strategy in the mice's hippocampus to increase the activity of the CYP46A1 gene, which in turn increased the production of the enzyme cholesterol 24 hydroxylase. By overexpressing the enzyme, the team was able to remove the excess brain cholesterol and completely correct the cognitive deficits in the mice. This genetic therapy could eventually be used as a treatment for AD, but further research is required to demonstrate the same effect in humans. We currently know that diabetes is a risk factor for Alzheimer's. Good news for diabetics. A recent study showed that controlling their blood sugar level may reduce their chances of developing dementia. Dr. Aidan Roshani and his colleagues from the National Diabetes Register and Institute of Medicine in Gothenburg, Sweden, explored the link between glycated hemoglobin and hospitalizations for dementia among type 2 diabetic patients. A cohort of 364,000 patients of average age 65 were recruited from the Swedish National Diabetes Registry between 2004 and 2012. A poor glycemic blood control demonstrated a 50% higher risk of being hospitalized for dementia. A higher glycemic level also showed an increased risk of dementia. However, this study doesn't prove a cause and effect relationship between blood glucose levels and dementia. In the future, glycemic control could be used for potential prevention of AD in type 2 diabetes patients. Thank you for watching this fourth episode of the Alzheimer.tv News Bulletin. We'd like to hear from you, so if you have any comments or would like to contact our team, please visit the Alzheimer.tv website. <laughs>